Warning, this podcast contains spoilers and people getting stabbed. Go unreasonably buff bird. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the SCN TV podcast for Game of Thrones, Season 6, Episode 7, The Broken Man. I'm your host, Mike, and joining me is Cleo. Hi. And John. Hello. Hello. So, interesting episode. Interesting title. Who do you think the broken man is? Or are there multiple broken men? I think there's multiple broken men. Mm Mm-hmm. We'll like go with that. the hound. Like the hound, who was quite literally broken the last time we saw him. Yeah. Mm. I love the whole story from uh, Brother, I believe his name was Ray. I forget. New character. Um, Teased from the beginning oh, yes. of the season. But uh, anyway, I thought you were going to die. And then I thought you were going to die. And then I thought you were going to die again. And then... There were, like, 16 other times that they were not going to, you know, that they were going to die. Yeah. Well, it's so funny because the episode starts, it's a cold, like, cold open because they did the last time on. And then I was ready to start singing, da-da-da-da, and it just starts. I'm like, what happened? This is important. What's going on? (laughs) And then at the end, it's the hound. It's like, oh, that's, uh, that's why. (laughs) And I immediately noticed that Ian McShane was playing the, like, septum of the the leader of that little village thingy. And I'm like, I got nervous because I was like, why didn't I hear anything about him being on the show? And I did hear about him being on the show. But this was, like, the end of last season. Like, Ian McShane cast for a secret role in upcoming season. I'm like, oh, 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 goody. And that was the only thing I heard of it. So much so that I forgot until I saw his f- face. And I'm like, right. I didn't hear a damn thing about it. And uh, that's I, w- I was like, I don't think he's making it out of this episode. <laughs> nah, he was too nice. And he was, it was way too th- nice. This show is very mean to nice people. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, being religious and reasonable and... You know, just building this wonderful little little idyllic community, and I, what I assume is the Riverlands. I think it's. Or is I think it's the halfway. Eerie? It's half. I think it's halfway between the Riverlands and the Erie. Okay. It's around that area. Yeah, I forget what because they call it. Because it's too. It's too green. Yeah. To be part of the Erie. Right. Uh, so I think it's right in the middle. But it's kind of too mountainy, hilly to be, you know. Yeah, to be the Riverlands. So I, it's somewhere. It's somewhere, somewhere in the middle. In there. They had nice views of some of mountains, man. That was a yeah. very, very pretty place to shoot. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful place. Yeah. Uh huh. But back to, they're way too nice. I mean, yeah, great. You yeah. found a guy bloody and dying at the bottom of a cliff. You know, you're gonna try to tend to him and be good to him and thinking he's gonna die 16 times over, and suddenly he's not dead. Mm-hmm. But you want to talk about way too nice. The hound is way too nice right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah. the hound is trying to channel his anger into chopping wood. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's doing a pretty good job at it. He's just pretending it's his brother's head. Over, <laughs> over. over. Speaking over. of which, uh, Ian McShane's character tells the hound, "You are still here for a reason. You didn't die because of a for a reason. It's not just because you're a big dude." And that reason might be we're going to f- maybe finally get a Clegane showdown. The Mountain versus the Hound. That would be lovely. That's not going to end well. No. No. No, it wouldn't. But I I, I don't know. I feel like that could Considering be... Considering, you know, something. at this point it's it's not really even... We don't even know if it's his brother in there anymore. Yeah. But, but yeah. still, it would be what was left of the Mountain fighting the Hound. Which, there's going to be a lot of Hound doing fighting, especially with his trusty wood axe. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, yes, we, you know, the three bandits, or as, you know, the Hound said, they're with the Brotherhood, so we could assume the Brotherhood without banners. The bro- yeah, they quoted yeah. 
the, you know, followers of the Lord of Light. Now, either they have gone dark side in the past couple of years, or these were just three guys fucking about claiming to be people they're not. It's it's very out of character for the Brotherhood Without Banners. They were pretty chill. They were, you yeah, know. they were bandits, but they were like the Robin Hood kind of bandits. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. slaughtering a band, you know, a group of innocent people just, <clears throat> like, building a windmill. But... Does, totally does not seem like them. Yeah, but I mean, I I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the Brotherhood of Banners has been growing. True. And when you have fanatical group growing, factions form. I think this is a faction of the Brotherhood Without Banners. Who are dicks? <laughs> you Who know what's going to happen. Or there's a crazy banshee leading them and she's telling them to do bad things. There is always that. <laughs> Did yeah. we talk about that on the show, or was that like think... an off-screen thing? Let's talk, let's talk about that Okay, now. let's talk about that. In the books at this point, the Brotherhood Without Banners is led by Lady Stoneheart. Um, I'll, for those who haven't read the books or haven't had that spoiled yet, I won't reveal who that is or who they are and what their allegiance is. But she's not nice. She likes vengeance and murder. She mm -hmm. likes killing people. So, so that could be an explanation for why we get these very, very strangely, radical, yeah, yeah, out of character. Right, they could be being led there. by somebody completely different than who we last saw. With Arya and Gendry's, like, you know, happy little adventure through the Riverlands. <laughs> I don't think it was all that happy. It wasn't that happy. It was happy for Arya when she watched, you know, the Hound almost die to a flaming sword. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's that there. Um, Jamie finally arrives at River Run. And yes. And proceeds to shut down the phrase. Like, the phrase, they've always, like, <laughs> given the air of incompetence. I mean, even, you know, George R. R. Martin even wrote them to, like, give off the air, like, the aura of idiocy. <laughs> yeah. Great job. <laughs> Oh. We'll, we'll kill him, I swear to God, we will. It's like, if you don't if you don't surrender the castle, we'll hang him. It's like, alright, so hang him. And then, you know, they take the noose off and draw a knife and like, so what's the point of threatening to hang him? I know, I, yeah, that, I mean, that, I, immediately, as soon as he took the, the, the noose off, I'm like, you're not gonna kill him. You yeah, wanna like, just, take you the, wanna just hung him. Take the noose off and, yeah, exactly. Hanging, in my opinion, is far worse way to die than getting your throat sliced. It I depends. Think. It, 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 it depends. depends. If your you're neck right. snaps, then you're dead. So Good point. Okay. You don't really have to feel that much after that. You're right. It depends on the method of throat slicing and the method of hanging. Yes. But still, it's I, I have a feeling throat slicing would take a while for you to die. I mean, it depends. not that Again, long. It method. depends on it how does... you do it. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. Yeah, like, exactly um, Jamie's point, like, don't th if you're gonna why make a threat if you're not gonna follow through on it like this if you open your mouth again I'm gonna punch you in it and then the guy proceeded to talk and Jamie proceeded to punch him in the mouth <laughs> yes I yeah. loved it I was like please please say something <laughs> say like, anything something else. Hand. like <laughs> <laughs> that was my real hand you want me to hit you with the good one <laughs> <sighs> it was beautiful yeah they just love bronze reluctance to the whole thing <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, Jamie's got a good point. Bronn has natural instincts, like, to lead. You know, just for combat, in general. Like, he yeah. would make a very good officer. Mm -hmm. Just because of his life's experience. So, you know, you promise, you're like, you're gonna make me a lord, and you're gonna give me a castle, and you're gonna get me a lady who is loving and beautiful, and all that other stuff. It's like, yes, of course. A Lannister, don't fucking say it. <laughs> Favorite Always part of the whole, stats. my favorite Please part of the don't. whole episode. Please. Because <laughs> you know is... how much I heard that from your brother. God damn it. Yeah, Bronn has been on the end, <laughs> well, the receiving Bron... end of bro both brothers. Yeah. Well, isn't Bronn like engaged to some lady that lives in some castle somewhere? He was, he was about, you, know, he was about to get married. He was about to get his estate yeah. or whatever, and then him and Jamie saunter off to, uh, to, to. Dorn at that point. Dorn. Yeah, I was going to say Davos. I'm like, no, that's not right. Dorn. 
Yeah, um, um, I'm guessing that fell through. And, and... I mean... It's just... I feel like his introduction in this episode was just a little weird because it's like, last we saw they were coming back from Dorne. And we didn't see him the whole time shit was happening in King's Landing. Now he's here again. It's like, did you did you get married? Did, did things happen? I, know, I don't quite know. I mean, I guess he wants to keep Braun around to keep him sharp because of the whole yeah. non-dominant hand thing now. Mm-hmm. Like, if Jamie did actually plan on dueling the Blackfish, he still, I don't know if he would win. I don't think so. Nope. I think he'd 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 beat almost everyone else inside that castle except for the Blackfish. Yeah. And Jamie is at an interesting point, like, um this castle belongs to the phrase. Who belong to us? Like mm-hmm. But then again, Jamie has to somewhat see it from uh you know the Blackfish's point of view. Like, what if someone invaded and took over Casterly Rock? the Lannisters, like, ancestral home. Yeah. And then Jamie took it back, and then, you know, the occupying force shows up and is like, hey, you're in our castle, get the fuck out. Like, I think yeah. Jamie would share his sentiments exactly. Yeah. Sure. But, like, but yeah. it's not his home that is taken over. Very true. It is not. <sighs> it's gonna end bloody. More than likely. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, because they, they have to know, like, they're gonna... You know, if they lay siege upon that castle, everyone inside is going to die. I, I don't see that there's any way around that. 8,000 yeah. men walked right up. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we marched an army behind you and you didn't lift a finger. What the fuck is going to happen when, you know, a, a not friendly army comes up behind you? Like, An allying if, force. As Bronn yeah. said, if we weren't friendly, if we were enemies, we'd be raping you right now. Or however he put it. Well, we yeah, do. for yeah. lack of a better... Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I just feel like the Blackfish really is just, just like, I got, I got nothing to lose here, you know. Yeah. I'm going to die in this castle either way, so... Like, yeah, I'll I, lose my hundreds, you'll lose thousands trying to take right. it. Right. Yeah. So, there's that. Um, I did love his uh, his armor, because they look like fish tails. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, I, that little bit of detail they... Uh, pull in because I I don't know if that was a book detail or something that their costume designers thought it would be awesome if his armor was black and looked like fish scales yeah he was literally a black fish yeah Yeah. very cool hey there you go can't miss him on the battlefield no not really alright moving on kill the fish guy (laughs) kill the fish guy yeah no not the one who smells like fish the one who looks you know never mind (laughs) let's uh move on to King's Landing here where I was very worried that Marjorie actually drank the crazy Kool-Aid. I was waiting for a moment, a clue, anything that she wasn't all in it. I was praying and for thank it. God. I'm sitting yeah. here like expecting it, wanting it. And then like as soon as you hear the parchment crumple when she like grabs yeah. her grandmother's hands, I'm like It's like But now what is that I know that's their sigil. Mm-hmm. But what is that telling her grandmother to do? To, to to leave? Is it telling her more than just that? That's telling her grandmother, I'm still me. I'm still a Tyrell. Okay. I'm still me. Like, listen okay. between the lines of what I'm saying. Like, yeah. So, uh... That's good. Because I was very worried yes. there. Yeah. Like, I really don't want the High Sparrow to win here. Now, here, my here's my question. And I think I already know my answer, but I want to get your opinions on it. Is Tommen in on it? No. That was my that was my. Poor little boy is being used by everyone. He's a friggin' idiot. He is an idiot. He's a prick. I, I mean, idiot. at least Joffrey was like smart in his crazy. <laughs> yeah. See, that's this the kid thing. just doesn't know. Ah. Uh, Joffrey. Ah. Uh, Joffrey was psychotic and crazy, but he wasn't completely naive. Yes. He was that's naive that's what I'm saying, like, yeah. Tommen is... A fast one on him. Right, Tommen is a sheltered little sweetheart. Yeah. Like, let's go back to season one. Joffrey made the executive decision to kill Ned Stark. Yeah. After, you know, nobody wanted that. Like, nobody on either side, his friends and his enemies, nobody wanted yeah. that to happen. But Joff- he did. 
Yeah, exactly. Joffrey put them in a gigantic shitstorm. And mm-hmm. that was his decision. He was an idiot, but he had the balls to make an executive decision. Yeah, and, and if it was Tommen, Tommen, not... Tommen up there, he would have just been like, if everybody thinks that's okay. You Has know. anyone seen my sack today? <laughs> it's like, I'm going to behead him if everybody's okay with that. Wait, wait, let me see if I can do his face that's near constantly on him. Wait, I'm going to pull the collar up to my... That's his face. He's about to cry in every scene. Yeah, he really is. We didn't get I much don't of him. Know what I'm doing. We didn't get any of him this episode. Thank God. Well, well, so we much. got uh, uh, the High Sparrow talking on his behalf because he, he. I bet you he went whining to the High Sparrow like, "My wife won't sleep with me. What do I do?" Yeah, this is really awkward situation. Now. The Sparrow just... <sighs> is now after the Queen of Thorns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which... I don't think that's a good idea. No, it really isn't. Now, I mean, obviously she's leaving King's Landing. She's go- I-, I have a feeling escape before they get her. I hope so. Because, I mean, I think the Sparrow is trying to do it legally... Like, oh, as see, legally yeah. as possible at this point, because now he has the king in his back pocket. He doesn't right. want to lose that. So, I mean, I think he's going to tread a little more carefully than just snatching her off the street. Yeah, you're right, because we didn't see her get out of the city. We just see her packing up. Right. And then... Where was I going? Oh, yeah, she tells Cersei off in the most fantastic way. And I love it. She really does. Like... Our two houses face collapse because of your stupidity. Basically, yeah. I mean, she let the Sparrow do this. But I see no objections. Any objections? There, there, there. Nobody? Okay, good. Great. Great. I, I mean, it's just a little sad to me because, like, they could have used each other's help still, I feel like. Yeah. Um, to, like, fight the Sparrows. But... At this point, you know, she's leaving, so it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. But, I don't know, I, I just, it's a little sad that she, she if she actually goes, you know, because, no, I mean, it's a little sad for Cersei, because, like, who does she have left, like, really on her side, besides, you know, Franken Mountain and um, the Maester? She really didn't have... Is he a Maester? He's a that, disgraced that- Maester. Dr. Frankenstein? Yeah, yeah Kyburn. Kyburn. He yes. was a ma- um I'm not sure if they went over this in the show. He was a maester. I don't think they did. And they forced him to break his chain, which they all wear those chains that, like... The whole thing is they forge a link to a chain whenever they master a field of study. Yeah, so it's a different metal for each. Yeah, it's a different, yeah, it's a different metal, different link for each, you know, mm. field that they've mastered. That's why Pycelle has all those crazy chains, because he studied pretty much everything. But, um... They forced him to break his chain because he was studying necromancy. And I mean, it worked. Which is a no-no. Well, like, it clearly it worked. Yeah, yeah, he knows what he's doing. But, I mean... Ah. Alright, so Cersei is left with that. Yeah, and I feel like she's just in such a awful mood. That she's just going to, anybody who steps her, she's just going to be like, all right, let's fight. And you know what? I'm going to bring up the promo to next week, right now, while we're on this yeah. topic. Yeah, because if you it. watch the preview, um, the sparrows come up to her. Here's Gregor and, you know, Kyburn behind her. And the sparrows, including her cousin, come up to her. Is like, you know, I forget how he put it. Like, stand aside or, like, tell them to stand down or there will be violence. Or, or come with us or there will be violence. Yeah. And she just looks dead in the eyes and goes, I choose violence. Like, yep. I, I mean, and I'm sure, like, Kyburn probably has some, like, fucking necro bombs in his pocket. He's just gonna blow them all up. <laughs> I don't think he's gonna need some crazy them. bullshit. What was the name of that green fire stuff? Wildfire. The... Wildfire. Wildfire, yeah. Okay, I don't know if he's crazy enough to do that. No, that would be dangerous. 
But I think she's going to point them out in their general direction. And... I think she's just going to step aside and, like, you know, take a couple steps back and step aside and, like, let him move forward. And just keep moving forward. And not stop moving forward until there's a clear path out the door. <laughs> <laughs> and through the walls. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't wait to actually see him, like, go on a murder fest. Oh, goody, 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 wouldn't that be fun? I just want to see some sparrows get the shit kicked out of them. Mm -hmm. They are so smug, you know, they need to be yeah. taken down a couple pegs. I want to see yeah. them cry. <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll come down to it, and Cersei will not give a shit about her cousin. Oh, fuck, no. She doesn't already. She never... I mean, well, she did. I shouldn't say she never did, because yeah. she did. Yeah, she, she did. Like, I mean, it's his but... fault that she got thrown into the cell in the first place. <sighs> that is true. So going to get a sword put at him. Yeah. All right. To the Stark children. Um, Sansa and Jon are on a noble quest to unite all of the houses of the North with them to take on the Boltons. I mean, he starts off with the Wildlings, which, you know... Uh, shit, what's his name? Tormund. I, I, oh my god, I forgot his name for a second. I've, I'm so sorry. Please don't kill me. checks. Yeah. Okay, there are so many shows where I'm like, what's that guy's name? Yeah, I know, okay. I know. <laughs> I do it all the time. <laughs> anyway, Tormund gives a good, you know, speech on his behalf, and John comes up with a good one, like, look, it's not the deal we made. I'm sorry, I should not be here. But... I should be don't... dead, but since I'm not. <laughs> but if we don't do this, you know, if we don't present a unified front, when they do come over the wall, however they manage to do that, we're fucked anyway. Yeah. So, you know, let's do this. And they agree. I think the giant saying snow was what sealed the deal. Oh, like, yeah. if, if the last giant with them oh. is like, you know, I'm in, I think they're all like, mm, all right, we're in. You know what? He agrees? Let's go. It's fine. It's good. I mean, if we say no, he's going to punch us, so. Yeah, yeah it, it, he'll, you know, kick us over the next mountain. Pick you, pick you up by the foot and whip you into a wall. I just have this vision of him walking through the one of the walls of Winterfell. Just oh god! Strolling. Yeah. Well, he's probably Hello. just as tall as the walls. I I just love I I, I can't wait to see like Ramsay look over the wall and be like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> it's like an actual giant. <laughs> That's when he shits himself. Yeah. But um, they get. Now, are you kidding? He'll probably pop a boner. That okay? That too. He'll get excited. <laughs> so they get the support of Lady Mormont of Bear Island. I love she her. She is now my favorite. <laughs> She's so great. Yeah. <laughs> she is now the lady of Bear Island, like the head of the house Mormont, a ten-year-old. Yeah. Because, you know, the old bear's dead, Jorah is exiled, and... Well, I mean, the, the old bear had no claim to, to the seat anyway. True. He had no claim to the, the seat. Jorah has no claim because he's a criminal, an exile, mm -hmm. and all of his sisters died at the Red Wedding. Yeah. So. And I mean, I know we, we probably saw her at the Red Wedding, but I sort of wish she had, like, things to say. Like, more. we got to know her. There was more of her, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Instead, we get the 10-year-old who, um. Which, it, if she, you know, if her mother is, like, half what she is. She's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I mean, she really handled herself really, really well. Yeah. Which, terrible for, uh you know, a 10-year-old to be in that position, but she handled herself really well, and Davos made some great points to her. It's like, Davos Seaworth? Like, house is new. Never heard of it. Like, <laughs> I guarantee your maester doesn't know who the hell I am. <laughs> yeah, I like that she had her maester on one hand and the her military yeah. man on the other hand. Well, she's not an idiot, clearly. No, no she's not. Yeah. But, um, it's like, yeah, I was a crab fisher, met a smuggler, now I'm addressing you. <laughs> Ain't life crazy. Yeah. 62. Was that the number? Was it 62? 62, man. Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, if they're all, if any of them are half the fighter that, you know, the old bear or Jorah are, that's 62. That'll be fine. That's 62 guys you really want with you. Yeah. yeah. Well, she also said each, each one of my warriors is worth 10. Regular men. I mean, that's a... So technically, she's given them 620 men. Yes, sure, by her math. <laughs> by that math. 
And then they go to the Glovers, I believe it was. Yeah, yes. the Glover. Because I was laughing at their house because it's stupid. Oh, I slipped that in and no one noticed. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Danny Glover? Yeah. I heard it. Well, Danny you know Glover. what I thought of when they were talking about the Glovers? I'm like, you mean that really shitty video game? Glover! Glover! God damn it. <laughs> well, they were just as useful. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, yeah. Sansa drops the your pledge to House Stark bomb, and uh, House Stark got us all killed. Yeah, I was, he does have a really good point. Sad to say, he does. Yeah. So, John now has a force of. We'll be generous and say twenty two hundred soldiers. <laughs> twenty two hundred is a decent number, and you know, there's a giant in there. There's a giant he's, in there. He's got to count for a couple more. A, a bunch of bears. A couple of bears. A couple of bears. So, uh, he's in a decent place. Excuse me? Right? Nowhere um, near enough, though. No, yeah. nowhere near what he wanted or what he was hoping for. And then we see Sansa write a letter and send a raven. Um, we really don't clearly see who she's writing to. Um, no. If you yeah, if you pay attention to Reddit or the internet or anything, someone actually slowed it down, screen capped, enhanced, and did all their little trickery, mm -hmm. and it's a note basically saying, you know, you promised to support me, bitch. Get the Knights of the Vale out here, and you know, basically that. It's like, and I promise you'll be rewarded. Was an important sentence in that. Was yes. it in there? Oh, good yeah. lord. So, but then everybody seems to forget that. Littlefinger is, like, the reason half of this shit is happening everywhere. Is that... Yeah. Because he's a little twit. I mean, we still don't know his endgame. It's, he's the one who conspired to have Joffrey killed. Which, I mean, I'm okay with that, because it's Joffrey, but... So, he also got sent into else... this whole mess. Yeah, I know. Everything else is really not cool or okay that's happened. So the question is, did he really know? And I mean... This is back a couple episodes ago when she encountered Littlefinger. But yeah. did he really know that Ramsay was going to do that? Of course he did. Of course he did. But, I mean... He cared more about his ends than he did about Sansa. I mean, well, one of the key things to his character is that he is creepily in love with Sansa. Yeah. So... He cares more about himself, okay. where he's going, than about Sansa. Yeah, as much I mean, as he he's, thinks he's in love with her. He took the Eyrie. I mean, that's that was a huge move for him. You he, know, he's warden of the East. He's right. I mean, that's a huge. I mean, he he's in it for the titles and the the power. You know, that's his end game. I mean, he just got one of the major <clears throat> titles. Like he is now de facto lord. I mean, he's not, but he's pretty much the lord of the Eyrie of the Vale. Yeah. Basically. Which is the know. Winterfell of the eastern part of Westeros. Right. So, that in and of itself was probably to him like, well, I can trade in the redhead. <laughs> Get this. And, and you know what? I, 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 can, I can't guarantee anything. But what I think is that he knew what Ramsay was capable of. He knew he was sending Sansa into a dangerous place. But he pushed it out of his mind. He didn't think about it. He didn't really focus on it. He just focused on, if I do this, I can get the power I want. Yep. Yeah. And tried not to think about it until Sansa, in many, many words, told him exactly what happened, you know? And then that's the first time we see him so shaken like, in this yeah, entire it, show. He's never been more shaken than that. He's never been more shaken. Probably, maybe he does somewhat a little bit, because like you said, he pushed it out of mind. And now that it's right in front of him, maybe he realizes he kind of fucked up. Or there was yeah. pants shitting terror that she might tell Brienne to take his head off. I'm gonna go with a little column A, little column B. Yeah. Yeah, because bit of both. Bit of both. He was alone and unarmed, and mm -hmm. I think he even did the math in his head. If she tells the big lady to kill me, there is no way any of my people I may or may not have with me can get to me quick enough. No. Yep. Yeah. It's like, she will kill me before... Yeah. Yeah. I'm still holding out hope that, uh... He'll die soon. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean... 
I'm just worried about what this what this reward will be for his help. You know, like what the hell is he gonna want? Because like you're making a deal with like the biggest asshole. Yeah. You know, I, I don't. I don't know. I mean, prob- granted. The, oh, sorry. What you I was say? saying the biggest asshole probably if you really like deconstruct everything, probably the main villain of the series, really. Like, if you really take all six seasons into account and all of his schemes and plans and double crosses and everything like that, like, I think one could make the argument that Littlefinger is, like, the true villain here. He's the Rumpelstiltskin. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. He's orchestrated most of the major events in the series, at least in Westeros. Yeah. You know? I want, I want when it comes time, uh, for his reward, Sansa would be like, I'm your reward. And then he gets close to her and she just stabs him in the neck. I really your hope... reward is me not punching you. I really yeah. hope that she... Your you know, reward is murder! I really hope she can bring herself to do that. I know. Well, Brienne's not with her, so... It's no. Be diff- Brienne is going to meet up with... Yeah. The Blackfish. Ironically, the Blackfish. <laughs> Who is ironically yeah. in front of Jamie. Uh-huh. <laughs> So yeah. they're gonna have a meet up. So again. that's gotta get resolved before they can even march on Winterfell. Well, there's um that's another part of the promo for next week, is that Brienne is talking to Jamie and basically says, I'm going to help them defend this castle to the last man. Yeah. Like you know, you got a problem with that, uh you're gonna have to come through me. Yeah. I mean and Guess what? There's another warrior Jamie can't defeat. Probably. Right. Probably. probably. No, no. Not not if he tried. <laughs> so on to the other Stark child, Arya. This is a lot yes. I need to talk about here because yes. I do not fucking get her. Why? Because being... he threw her money around? She's throwing her money around. Standing on bridges? She's like in easily visible public places. I swear that bridge was at an intersection that she sat and begged at while she was blind. Like That could be. She yeah. is in... A lot of really open public places. Like, just, here I am, in the sunlight, nobody else around, look at me, like, I'm in line of sight, you know, you could see me from anywhere. And, you know, and not to mention, uh, someone wrote an interesting article, like, theories about all this. You know, Arya saw the face that the Waif used last season. Oh. It was one of the faces she touched and, like, looked yeah. at, like, really, you know, closely at. So, I don't think it was too much of a surprise that she stabbed her. But no. Yeah. And, like, Arya well, didn't even have Needle with her. Yeah. It's another thing. And Why I mean, is she unarmed? Yeah, and as soon as that old lady walked up, I was like, No, don't trust the old lady! Shit. It's like, like no. sweet girl. And, I mean, okay. You got... The power of Christ compels you! You got a slice across your abdomen. Survivable, even, in those times. Didn't seem too deep. Yeah, she got stabbed, though. You got two stabs to the liver. One of was a nice, long twisting. You're dead. Yeah. Like, sorry. Um, so, either she she did it on purpose. She was out in the open on purpose. Like, I, I, I don't know. Because she wasn't even trying to, like acknowledge the consequences of her actions like I it it's so beyond me like what the hell she was thinking because she had to have known she wasn't just gonna walk away so here's the two fun theories I've read this week first is you know she saw the face before she's throwing her money around she's a Westerosi girl wanting to go home she's being really obvious and she's just standing out in the open not even attempting to disguise herself in any way shape or form yeah she knew it was going to happen. She somehow got the actress Lady Crane to help her. That the co- you know, she had like, you know, because she was wearing really thick clothing, that there's like fake bags of blood under there and everything like that, and that this is all an act. And she's walking around in the middle of like, you know, public, putting on a show, bleeding, and nobody's really noticing her. Or like she's trying to make it noticed or whatever. So either she's. She's like faking her death. So either she's really playing that up. Because, you know, someone who is training to be a faceless assassin is not that stupid. 
Yeah. If it, like no. to be caught out in the open like that. No. So it was clearly intentional. But now, then the other, you just let me before you move on to the next one. Yeah. The other side of that is the already faceless assassin is not dumb enough to fall for bags of blood. Very true. I think she'd be able to know whether or not she killed her. And, you know, Alex in chat just brought up a good theory, and I just caught it here. I think all of this is a test. I think he was trying to make her be Arya Stark and not a no-face woman. Like, this could just be one really long, elaborate test. Mm, that also doesn't make sense, though, because... The other, the other mindfuck fan theory that I saw, and I really can't see this being true, and if it is, I'm just going to scream, is that... Um... Arya and the Waif are the same person. Like, there's what? some kind of, like, doppelganger manifestation or a hallucination because she's been drinking all that liquid at the House of Black and White. And that the Waif is Arya's no it? one self. And that, you know, she's now killing Arya Stark, the leftover of her personality, and she's going to truly become no one because of that. What? Exactly what I said when I was done reading it. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Just, you want I no, mean, no. You want to know what? That makes more sense than the other two theories we just postulated. Well, the only other thing I can think of is that she did get stabbed. Getting yes. stabbed really hurts. Yes. And her friends at the, the in the actors' brigade are going to help her. Yeah. Because I mean, they and sort she's of a set up. Idiot. They sort of set up. Uh, uh, them being like amateur diagnoses with the, the dude with the warts on his face. two warts. Yeah. So I got two warts on me cock. So now here comes... Pour whiskey on it. <laughs> now the other theory, the first one we talked about, seems so cre more credible to me because I still, for the life of me, can't imagine Arya being that dumb. Yeah. It's a little she hard of a pill is to in... swallow. I don't think she is. She is in Bravos. She realized the second she got there that the faceless men pretty much own that city. Yeah. Cause he you know, he told Jack and Agar told her seasons ago, give this coin to any man of Bravos and say Valor Magulis mm -hmm. and they will take you to me, basically. Yeah. So you're gonna tell like any citizen from the city knows what to do with that coin? Like, you realize they own this city. They're everywhere. You've only met two of them. There's yeah, and, and and we the way she's looking at everyone while she's walking down the street, it it really made me think, are are they all faceless men? And the way they were all are, just, are they yeah, all just are they always her. just standing in the crowd? And then the way all those people were just watching her, like she's walking through a market bleeding. Hundreds yeah. of people are just looking at her and nobody gives a shit. Yeah. It makes you feel like they all knew, you know. Mm -hmm. But, like, the other thing was, like, didn't we get a shot from her perspective? Right? Like, just for a moment in that scene, there was a shot from her perspective, and it was all woozy and whatnot. You know? Was it? Oh, I don't remember. I really don't remember. I'm sorry. I don't know if, I don't know if I'm misremembering that or, or not, but... Yeah. I got this horrible feeling that she actually did get stabbed, and she might actually just, like, fucking die in a long projected manner well there's any way you slice this there's something we're missing oh yeah because she's not that stupid yeah. she doesn't have needle i mean they're you know not none of these theories make a hundred percent sense because we're missing pieces we are missing pieces and she was like we said not that stupid and honestly anybody in her position would have been armed yeah was so, fucking gone by then. Or exactly. She was making too public of a spectacle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If if you're trying to run away for you know, you I would if there were no ships to take like immediately I would jump into the sea and start swimming. Somebody is going to notice <laughs> get as far as I could get. <laughs> you know, she just dropped two huge sacks of money on a table in front of multiple people. Yeah. That's gonna get, you know, talked about. Chances are one of them was a faceless person. So Someone. These theories can all lead into next episode, which is called No One. We missed something. We did miss Theon and Yara again. Yes. Keep forgetting about them. Um, I didn't. <laughs> no, Theon is... She gives him a pretty good 
psychology pep talk. Yeah. In a hard, you know, either be my brother again or go kill yourself. Be good in that it may kill him. Yeah. It's like... And how the fuck... Can I just... Fuck did they make it that far? Because they're in Volantis. Yep, they're in Volantis. That is very fucking far. That means they sailed from the Iron Island... Like, map of Westeros. We're gonna make a nice big blocky map, right? Okay? Here's Volantis, like, halfway between... You know, the other half of the continent is where Arya is in Slaver's Bay, where Dan, well, where Tyrion is right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're on the other side of Westeros, the Iron Islands. They had to sail all the way around Dorne in the south. Yep. And I mean, I didn't yeah. know, I didn't realize how far it actually was until I watched After the Thrones and they had the, the map. And I was like, they went, they're, they're there? They, yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Dang, I was like, the map is fucking crazy. That's fast. It's th- yeah, no, they they have the fastest ships in the world. Apparently, yes. Well, that is their society. They know how to yeah. build ships. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Jesus Christ, they actually might get to Danny. <laughs> First, yeah. Okay, yes. Well, who knows what kind of super ships What's-His-Face is building. No, okay, I'm... If somehow Yoron or one of his people make it to Danny or to Marine before Theon and Yara do, I'm going to scream bullshit. Yeah, there's no, there's no logical way they could do that. Yep, they, they took all our best ships. Build me new ones. There is no way they built a new ship fast enough to catch up with them and overtake them. Yeah, there's no way in hell. Yeah. Also, Yara likes to fuck sluts. Yeah. Yeah? It's like, I'm gonna go fuck the tits off this one. I'm like, good for you. Go get it, girl. She she tried to make a joke about they are not having a dick, and she's like, oh, man, too soon. Sorry. It's like, look, I will never hurt you, brother. I'm, like, basically saying, I am so sorry. Yeah. (laughs) Didn't mean it. Didn't mean it. So maybe Theon will metaphorically grow his balls back. (laughs) Well, I think he just, he has to, to take control of his life again. He does. I think going to his sister was the first step, and now he really just has to be himself again. This was step two. I mean, that was a pretty... For yeah. an Iron Islander, that was a very motivational pep talk. Oh my gosh, yes. You gotta... For their... It's so- not the most... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For their society, that was gold right there. That was Dr. Phil shit. That was about as emotional as you're gonna get for an Iron Islander. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, look, I need my brother back. If you can't give me that, go cut your wrists. Thank you. Like... Harsh, but apparently surprisingly effective in this case. What the hell? Well, I mean, I think it's because because maybe Theon has entertained the thought of suicide before. Probably, um, but now that he's with his sister, I don't think it's something that he's really contemplating. Probably or at least, not. if he is, it's not strong. Because no. you know, I think he feels like he's helping her, and that he mm-hmm. can help her, and that that he has a future. Very true. So I I think that was that was like her saying I know you're trying, <laughs> but try I'm trying hard enough. <laughs> but try faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right then. So on to next episode, which is called No One. Um, nothing is gonna ever beat the synopsis. The North is reminded. Yeah, that's the best <laughs> one. <laughs> they didn't do a re- good enough job of reminding them. No, they really didn't. Anyway. Next is called No One. They did their best. While Jamie weighs his options, Cersei answers a request. A.K.A. Whoa. Jamie does a thing. <laughs> yeah. Jamie does a thing. Cersei does a thing. Tyrion's plans <laughs> bear fruit. Oh. And Arya faces a new test. Oh, god damn it. So the theory... not dying. I was going to say, not dying. <laughs> not bleeding out from an upper abdominal wound. So I do want to point out, um, we only got three episodes left. Stop doing that. I really feel... I also feel want to point out we... that the final episode is the longest in Game of Thrones history. How long? I'm How long? it at 69 minutes, giggity. Oh, wow. Um, and I also know that the penultimate episode is going to be called Bastard, the Battle of the Bastards. I mean, yeah, we're, you're putting, you know, John I'm way too against... excited about that. I do know the name of the finale, it just I don't remember exactly. I did read it, but... Here, I'll look it up. You could do that. Um, 
So, I, I mean, obviously shit's going to get real. We're not going to have to wait a season to see the f battle for Winterfell, which yeah. is good, because I was getting a little worried. It's called The Winds Look. of Winter, which is coincidentally oh. the name of the sixth book that is not it's out yet. Not yet. Oh, damn! Because, uh, I mean, I feel like uh, John's not going to wait around. No, John no, John is... knows he has precious little time until the White Walkers well, get I to mean, the wall. More than likely, Littlefinger's going to show up, yeah. bring 6,000 people on horseback, and they're going to stroll up to Winterfell and take it. Now, yeah, because the, 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 the <laughs> Eerie, that's, that's the last army that hasn't been ravaged by all the crazy shit that's been going on these last six yeah, years. Yeah, we mentioned it a couple they're episodes fresh. ago. They're fresh. They yeah. have, you know, no cat. They are flat, fresh, well stocked, well rested. They haven't taken part in a single battle in like the last really, five years. You really have to hand it to what's her face for being so batshit crazy. Batshit crazy. She now has she the saved premier her army. fighting force. Like, yeah. You know, probably the best in the area. <laughs> in the area, yeah. Probably maybe not as numerous as the Lannisters or the Tyrells, but you know. They also, again, are fresh. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I know John wanted to go in there and overwhelm them with sheer numbers, mm -hmm. but I mean, even with his current forces, I think he thinks it's doable. It's not. If it was just the Boltons, it might have been doable, especially the fact that John has the home field advantage of growing up in that castle. But that the fact that the Boltons have the Karstarks and the Umbers, right? That's too much. I don't. It, there's no way they're going to win over the Karstarks. No chance in hell. Rob kind of cut the head off of that one, quite literally. <laughs> and I don't know about the Umbers. Yeah, it's not looking good for that. But with Littlefinger's help, I don't have any doubt in my mind that they will be successful in their endeavor. They will be successful in their endeavor, and then promptly stabbed in the back. Yeah. Well, long as Sansa gets to stab Ramsay. Oh my God. Really? Yeah. That needs to happen, or she needs to watch it happen. Yeah. But I mean, uh, it, realistically, would she be anywhere near the front lines in that? No, but I could see no. her brother going, "Hey, you want to borrow a long cloth for a sec?" I mean, out of all of the Stark <laughs> well, kids, what I see... she's the most useless with a sword, I think. Uh, yes. Um. Next to maybe uh, Bran, because he kind of can't stand. But good point. Um, well, Rickon's in a I, cell, I, so... Yeah. I I think, yeah, she might not see the, the, the front lines, but if they push far enough, I think she might, th when they sneak in, because they're going to sneak in through the tunnels, right? That's what they wanted to do, sneak in through the sewers? Yes. So I think she might go with whatever small group they take through the tunnels to try to get Rickon out. So yeah. I think she might be in Winterfell while shit's going down. She might be that squad. Point. Yeah, she might be part of the stealth squad. Two other people. Yeah, Ramsay needs to die. Brienne and Tormund are going to go on a stealth adventure with Sansa to rescue her little brother. Yay! And on that note, everyone, that's our show. And she'll finally ask, why do you keep staring at me? <laughs> I don't understand! It needs to be asked. <laughs> I'll ask you. Because it's, you it's on her face. You? It's <laughs> do you want some? <laughs> it's on her face every time he does it. She's just like, why? Why? I don't understand. <laughs> what is flirting? Why is the man with the fire beard staring at me? Why is chewing his chicken leg? <laughs> God damn it. All right, my then. My favorite thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's our show. Cleo, where can they find you? <laughs> they can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and Pinterest at Cleo Moto. John, how about you? <laughs> you can find me contemplating medieval army tactics at No More No More on Twitter. That's always a good thing to contemplate. You can find me doing the same thing on Twitter, at Villager, and also thinking of more creative ways Brienne can ask Tormund what the fuck. Um, you can find all of us on Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, Google+, Plus, MySpace, and YouTube at ASOTV Podcast. You can follow us at those places for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows, movies, and games. If you're watching live, we have nothing coming up at 10 o'clock, but at 11 o'clock, we have the Once Upon a Time Rewind, or ASOTV Rewind Once Upon a Time, they're doing episodes four and five, you would know you're on it. Of season one of Once Upon a Time. Yep. Yeah. Yep, she confirmed that. Uh, I'm not forgetting anything. Thank you all for watching. Yeah. <laughs> Good night.